This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1450. How to Stay on Budget by Never Using This One Word, part one, by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I narrate posts from thought leaders in personal finance every single day of the year in 10 minutes or less. Are you loving Optimal Finance Daily? Why not share with a friend today? Invite them to join the party by sending them a link to oldpodcast.com. And while they're there, they can check out our five other shows on topics like personal development, health, and relationships. And I have a bit of a longer post today. I'll read the first half today and then finish the rest for you tomorrow. So let's dive into the first half and start optimizing your life. How to Stay on Budget by Never Using This One Word. Part one, by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. It's Thursday night. You just got home from a long day at work. You were running around like crazy, and just when you thought things were going well, your boss made a snide comment about last week's meeting. If he wanted you to be better prepared, you think to yourself, maybe he should have given you more than five minutes before telling you about the presentation. Oh, well, you're home now, and only one more day before the weekend. You plop down on the couch, phone in one hand, remote in the other, and start methodically scrolling through Netflix like always. Then your phone buzzes. It's Scotty. He says the guys are going out for drinks and you should come. Man, I want to, but I've already spent a lot of money going out this month, you think? My budget is looking pretty thin. I can't go. Not this time. You think about it, but you don't mean it. Two minutes pass by but today was long. I need this. And it's not that big of a deal. I'll make it up next month. Then you walk out the door. Sound familiar? You might be thinking I'm about to tell you how you can save money by not going out. Or maybe I'm going to help you see why certain friends are a bad influence on your budget. You'll be happy to know it's neither. I want to talk about one single word that might be causing a more significant problem than you suspect. It's a word we use all the time, but don't pay attention to it. Can't. All your bad habits boiled down to one word. I recently read an excellent article by James Clear where he pointed out the importance of the words we use when talking to ourselves. Specifically, he discussed the importance of our words when resisting temptation. James points to a research study that found a connection between the words we tell ourselves and the likelihood of saying no. Here's how the study worked. 120 students were split into two different groups and asked to resist various temptations when offered. One group was instructed to refuse by saying they can't, while the second group refused by saying they don't. For example, if the temptation was ice cream, the first group would say, no, I can't eat ice cream, while the second group would say, no, I don't eat ice cream. After repeating this exercise over and over again, each student answered a set of unrelated questions and then turned in their answer sheet when they were finished. As each student walked out of the room, they were offered a treat as a thank you for participating. They could choose between a healthy chewy bar and a candy bar. Here's where things got interesting. The students who said can't took the candy bar 61% of the time, while the students who said don't only chose the candy bar 36% of the time. It certainly seems like the words they use had a significant impact on their immediate actions. Now, you might be thinking this is a fluke. After all, maybe those people just don't like healthy chew bars, or maybe they still thought it was part of the study. Luckily, the research continued. Can't versus don't long term. The same researchers also looked at can't versus don't over a longer period of time. For this study, they had 30 working women sign up for a health and wellness seminar. The women were divided into three groups of 10 and asked to envision a long-term health and wellness goal that was important to them. Then they instructed the groups to resist the temptation to stop while striving towards their goal. Group one was the control group and wasn't given a specific strategy on how to say no when they wanted to quit. Group two was instructed to implement the can't strategy by telling themselves they can't miss a workout. Group three used the don't strategy by telling themselves I don't miss workouts. The women reported their results for the next few days to see how many of them stuck to their goals. The results after 10 days? Group one, control group. Only three out of 10 women stuck with their goals. Group two, can't group, was the worst with only one out of 10 remaining. 
Group three, the don't group, had an astounding eight out of 10 women persisting with their goals. They concluded that the words you use not only help you make better short-term decisions, but they also help you stick to your long-term goals. Why this works. Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Stay on Budget by Never Using This One Word by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. When you say that you don't eat ice cream or you don't drink, it implies that you don't want to. Not that you wish you could, but you can't. I've seen this play out recently in my own life because I haven't had a drink now in five months. And people ask me all the time how I resist the temptation. But the truth is, I legitimately don't want to drink. It's so much easier to resist temptation when we change our minds about what is actually tempting. I don't feel any restriction when it comes to drinking because I feel that I'm allowing myself to drink as much as I want. I just simply don't want any. There is no temptation to resist. It probably took a good three months to get to this place of losing all desire to drink. I needed to shed my old identity as someone who enjoys drinking and replace this habit with something that felt more rewarding, which for me ended up being my luxurious morning routine. I also tapped into a non-drinking community that I found on Facebook called One Year No Beer, and I read books about other people who are alcohol-free, often referred to as quitlet. A big part of changing our desires is being careful about where we put our attention. When we continually ingest content like what is shared here on Optimal Finance Daily, we start to shift our beliefs and behaviors about money, alcohol, exercise, or any other aspect of our lives that could use improvement. So thank you for joining me today and every day. Well, that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and a great weekend. And I'll see you on the Sunday show tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.